I, I don't know. I yeah, it is. Get the net. You want to get him here or down there? I'm coming right to you. Okay. That's not a dink, that's for sure. Uh, feels like a shark, dude. Uh. Get it down there, get it. Oh, hold on, hold on, don't go for him yet. I'm gonna come head in. Oh, one hook, get him, get him, go. Get him, get him, pull up, up. Oh, you are the man. One hook I had left. Now, hold on, hold on. Don't. You got him? Yo, watch, watch. This is how you do it. Oh, okay. oh yeah, dude. <laughs> Guess what I'm putting on next? Oh, that's a nice fish, dude. Dude, nice fish. I'm pumped. Look at that one hook, Mike. I knew you had to get him or... Oh, look. oh, fucking lamprey. Cool. Look at that. Look at that fucking thing. Oh, shit. He's still 41. On the Strike King man, Magnum 8.0, baby. God. 41 inch musky. Holy crap. Wow, that's a great fish. Yeah. Great fish. Wow. I, I'm picking up a bunch of those tonight, dude. From where? Online. Oh, okay. You know, purchase wow. the way to go. I got them way out there. God. Oh, you did? He hit it yeah. way out there? That's a great I almost just dropped my water through the It's so wet. Look at the size of that thing. Wow. He's active. He's ready to go. See ya. Wow. Man. Dude. <laughs> I'm shaking, dude. I got, I got my adrenaline going. That was awesome. Oh, my God. I told you that crankbait, man. You're my good luck charm, brother. <laughs> That's a nasty thing, man. And now, after seeing that, I, I don't know if the hooks on the 4.0 are stout enough to pull in something like that. <laughs> Those 8.0 hooks are a solid size bigger than me. Uh-huh. All right, so I thought I'd include a review of the successful crankbait I've been using the last two falls over in Lake St. Clair at Metro Park for big musky lunch. And it's the Strike King 8.0 Magnum in the perch color. Um, this crankbait is part of that Kevin Van Dam line series that's made for, you know, bigger bass, bigger lakes like Lake St. Clair where you know fish actually in deeper water which you know the 10 XD is made for deeper water that is rated at at like 25 feet deep and I guess to balance the line out he actually came out with this giant square bill for you know shallower regions of the lake um, this is rated three to seven feet deep um, it's four and a half inches long and it doesn't really have a, it doesn't have a knock in it but I tell you what, 
this crankbait gives off the widest hard hitting wobble that I've ever seen or actually ever used in like a bass crankbait. And I thought, when I saw it, I thought, you know what? I could see this working for giant size largemouth bass and smallmouth bass, but also musky lunge instead. So I actually bought it for that reason. And you know, over at Metro Park, I do really well all the way up until late October of bucktail spinners. It just drives the musky crazy, both the tiger musky and the Great Lakes spotted musky. But then they just turn off. The water temperatures drop, the water becomes murky, and so you got to adapt to the changes. And I was trying all types of lures. Uh, you know, brother said, you know, they have successful with crankbaits in the fall. And, you know, I know everyone likes to throw those big rubbers. But I'm type of the fisherman that I think on the terms of longevity, um, I want a lure that I can throw for eight hours straight and not give me back pain, joint pain, and all that other crap that goes along with throwing those giant rubbers. I know having a bait caster, you be able to throw them more effortlessly, but I actually like throwing some of the small lures. And if you, like one angler I talked to at Metro Park over here said, if you look at Master Angler Awards, some of the biggest muskie have been caught on the smallest lures. So it's not like you always have to throw those giant rubbers, you know, especially when it's cold out, you come out here, you want something that you whip for eight hours straight and you know, not have to deal with the back pain and all that. And I think this crankbait's it, man. This thing's badass. And the thing about the square bills is these things give off the most hard hitting action and vibration in the water. So even though, you know, this is a perch color and it's got a nice chartreuse glow to it, even though the muskie might not see it in the water, they're picking up on the vibration. Because the muskie I caught with my buddy Alex last fall, and I think that, that was like mid-December, he actually whacked it with the body and actually snagged them and set the hook and I was able to reel them in. So they're actually, they're, they're really attracted to the sound and vibration of this lure. And if you notice in the video, the way I uh, reel it up, I keep my rod tip up even higher. Um, it's not only, you know, it's rated at three to seven feet, feet deep. If I keep my rod tip low, I'm gonna start snagging stuff, picking up all types of stuff in the bottom. With having the rod tip up, I'm actually just scraping the bottom and doing that's gonna drive all types of fish in the area crazy. They're gonna notice it more. Plus, when you keep your rod tip sky high, it's actually causing more resistance on this square bill and causing the lure to actually wobble even wider and hit harder. So I mean, it's where, when I keep my rod tip high as I can, it's just giving off a nice hard hitting vibration. And if another thing you notice, I'll, I always do a stop and go retrieve. I'll cast it out there, reel for a few seconds, stop, it floats, sometimes they're gonna rise. That'll also trigger strikes. I, last fall, I think the one 45 inch hit when I was just, I turned around and I was talking to the one dude and he was, you know, we were talking about fishing. And then I felt the muskie hit and set the hook. So I'm big fan of using stop and go retrieve with this uh, crankbait, but also just reeling it. You know, the 41 inch I caught this year he actually hit it just reeling it so you you can try the stop and go retrieve you can just try reeling it you can try a really fast retrieve if you want to try this in the summer that's one thing i haven't even used this crankbait in the summer so i'm curious how well it works then but i just know it's a very successful crankbait to use in the fall and another benefit that it's not only light it's actually very cheap too. It's only 12 bucks. You can buy these at some of the local brick and mortar stores. They're not easy to find, said to say. Um, not all the Cabela's handles them. I think I bought this one in Dundee, the, you know, the super size Cabela's. Bass Pro doesn't carry it. But I noticed that Gander Outdoors that's recently going out of business carries them. You can get them for like six bucks a pop for half off. So, and another thing, I don't want to forget this. You can whip this thing as far as the eye can see. I swear to God, that's another thing. It's very um, aerodynamic when you throw it in the air. Even if there's a wind, you can cast it really far. It's uh, one and one eighth ounce. Um, not really heavy, but I swear to God, when you whip this thing in the air, you can really cast it a long distance. And you know, I know a lot of fishermen. Most musky fishermen use a bait caster. 
people with this lure, you're actually going to get actually more of an even longer distance if you use like a, you know, surf rod and if you use a uh, saltwater spinning reel with it, like, you know, I'm using the C5000 because there's no resistance when you're casting a spinning reel. You know, with a bait caster, you got your thumb on it, you're going to le lose a little distance. And if, you know, further you can cast out there, you can get towards those drop-off points or just where, you know, bigger muskie might be lurking. Like Northern Mike always says, he tells me, the more ground you can cover from the shoreline, you increase your chances of catching fish. And so I think that goes, you know, he's a big bass fisherman and uses that uh, motto. I think that works just as well for muskie too. So, you know, I'm a big fan of bay casters. I wish I could afford a Tranks or Beast. But I couldn't, so I've been, you know, I kind of started off with spinning. But there are some, you know, there are some pros to use actually a spinning rail compared to the bait caster. Um, but that's the way I work it. I'll use a stop and go retrieve. This bad boy casts a long distance. And I'm actually using a 100 pound fluorocarbon leader with 50 pound uh, Power Pro braid. And so using that lighter 50 pound braided line you actually get longer distance with it because it's very smooth line you know i will say this if you're probably going to use this for musky fishing um you're going to want to change out the treble hooks because that 41 inch musky i landed actually broke off one of the hooks i don't know if he did it actually when mike was trying to net him or when i just got him on the deck and that damn uh, you know that uh, lamprey popped off and i noticed the hook actually broke off as well too so you know you probably want to chase the stronger hooks too and that will help uh, but the hooks come with it are pretty good the one thing nice too is the split rings are really strong it's just strange that you know you would think this would come with a loud knock it really doesn't that would probably give off more of a vibration and sound but i guess you don't need it because this key this crankbait gives off such a wide wobble and hard hitting thump when you're reeling it especially when you get rod tip high that you really don't even need any rattle because that vibration just seems to drive the musky nuts even i mean even when the water's like stained like muck and brown that you know that's when i got that one smaller musky last year and I actually sn snagged them on the back so anyways i hope you guys enjoyed this video uh, be sure to subscribe and look forward to my future videos. <laughs> Wait, it won't turn on? Let's see how close I can get up to him. Oh fuck, it's a buck! <laughs> oh, I'm crazy! It was a fucking buck! <laughs>